hey everybody, we're going to spend the next two weeks working with coins. And so this is going to give us a nice jumping off point for second grade work with coins. It is only two weeks and we are doing some supplemental lessons to help support students with some of the more basic coin counting skills that they missed last year. So these two weeks are definitely not all the practice that students are going to get with counting coins. We're going to loop back to this skill in the spring, especially after students learn to add two and three digit numbers so that we can connect their work with pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters to their work with addition and subtraction. To give you a quick overview of sort of where we're going over the next two weeks, we are going to start today with identifying coins. So today's purpose is solely to help students look at coins, identify what does a penny look like, what does a nickel look like, a dime and a quarter, and really name out for themselves and each other what are some ways we can tell these coins apart, especially nickels, dimes, and quarters, because pennies are obviously a little easier. So today they're really gonna practice identifying the coin, naming the value, and counting sets. They're just gonna be counting sets where it's all pennies or all nickels or all dimes, and they're actually not going to count quarters. They're just going to practice identifying quarters and thinking about how they're different from the dimes and the nickels. Tomorrow, we're going to build on what they're doing today. They're going to continue to work on this skill of identifying both how coins look and identifying the value. But then they are going to count two sets of coins. So for example, they may count dimes and then think about how they could count on if they have pennies. And then finally, the final two days of this week, students are continuing this work with identifying the coins, reminding themselves of their value, but then they'll be counting mixed coins and connecting that back to their work with skip counting, and they'll be counting up to about 50 cents. And then the last day this week, they'll be doing the same thing, but they'll be counting up to 100 cents, so they'll learn that 100 cents is the same as $1. So they're doing a lot this week. It obviously builds really nicely on itself and their work with skip counting should build really nicely on the unit that they just wrapped up. In terms of getting ready to teach this whole week, you want to make sure that you make baggies of coins for kids to work with. You want every kid to have a baggie of coins that has at least five dimes, at least five nickels, at least 10 pennies, and really only one quarter. Once we get into our work next week with quarters, we will put more quarters into student bags, but they don't need to have this exact amount. Um, in fact, it would be nice if they have a mixed amount, so as they're hunting through looking for their dimes, nickels, pennies, and quarters, they can work together to name out what they have and, and what the value of all those dimes together is. Okay, so you obviously want to open with connecting this back to what kids already know about coins. This standard 2MD8 is the first time that counting coins shows up in the Common Core State Standards. But of course, students are going to come to us with quite a bit of knowledge around coins. And so open by asking students, when have you used or counted coins in your life? Also ask them to share with their partner, what do you know about coins? Then have kids share out. Then talk about how we're going to kick off this unit and we're going to be talking about coins. I assume many kids are going to share out that they know that there are pennies, there are nickels, there are dimes. There are quarters. Maybe kids even may know that there are silver dollars or half dollars. Lots of opportunities to talk about coins in our life. So let students know that today we are going to get our bags of money and we are going to work on identifying our coins, how they look, and how much they're worth. So let's start with a penny. Everybody say penny. This is how a penny looks. A penny is worth one cent. And during this time, you're gonna want students with their baggies of coins in front of them because as you show kids this penny and talk about how it's worth one cent, you're gonna invite kids to hunt through their bag and get all their pennies out. So they're gonna hunt through. And as they're hunting through looking for pennies, they're going to be generating their own ideas of what they're looking for. With a penny, it's a little bit easier because they're looking for a specific color, but maybe kids will point out that they can look for the words one cent on the penny. They can look for the Lincoln Memorial, which has these columns. Then after students have taken all the pennies out of their baggie and they have a nice pile on their desk, you can talk about how since each penny is worth one cent, if we're counting how many cents we have in all, we count pennies by one. So we would count one cent, two cents. Everyone, take all your pennies and count how many cents you have. Write it both as words 
and with the symbol, then have them throw their pennies back in their baggie and talk about the nickel. This is a nickel, it is worth five cents. Sometimes nickels look like this, sometimes nickels look like this. Everyone, hunt through your baggie of coins and pull out all your nickels. Again, kids are gonna find things that they're relying on to figure out which is a nickel. The size, the picture of Monticello, the picture of Jefferson. After students pull out all their nickels, you may wanna have them turn and talk. How did you know that these were nickels and not dimes or not quarters? Tell your partner, what clues did you use? Did you look at the five sense words? Did you look for Monticello? Did you know that they're bigger than the dime, etc., etc.? Okay, nickels are worth five cents. So since every nickel is worth five cents, if we want to know how many cents we have in all, we can skip count by five. It's like groups of five cents. Go ahead and count your nickels to figure out how many cents you have. Have a few kids share out. Susanna has four nickels. Four nickels is the same as 20 cents. And then dimes. What do you notice about the dimes? What clues did you use to help you figure out which was a dime or which was a nickel and which was a quarter? Since dimes are worth 10 cents, if we want to know how many cents we have in all, we skip count dimes by 10. Everyone count how much your dimes are worth. Susanna has five dimes. That's 50 cents. And then finally, a quarter. Quarters are worth 25 cents. Sometimes they look like this. Sometimes we have state quarters. Everyone go in your bag, find your quarter. Kids will only have one quarter, but have them talk about how they figured out it was a quarter. Did you look for the big eagle on the back? Did you see quarter dollar along the bottom? And how much are quarters worth? They're worth 25 cents. And then wrap it up and put a bow on it. So friends, we have lots of different coins that we count. We have a penny and a penny is worth how much? One cent. So what do we count pennies by? One. We also have nickels and how much are nickels worth? Five cents. So what do we count nickels by? Five. Dimes, 10 cents. Count them by 10. And finally, quarters. They're the big ones worth 25 cents. We count quarters by 25. We'll talk about that later this week. Now let's practice together. And this is where they're really gonna get the chance to use these baggies where they have mixed coins and really think about how do I know which one is a penny? Great, let me hunt through my baggie and pull five pennies out of my bag. Now let me think about how much is a penny worth? Now let me count to find how much five pennies is. So what's really key here is that they actually have these bags so that they're actually going in and differentiating between all the coins and using whatever context clues they've taught themselves to figure out which one the penny is, which one the dime is, which one the nickel is. And then finally, depending on where your kids are in terms of differentiating between the coins, you wanna make sure you get here because you wanna give students the opportunity to share out how they differentiate between all the coins. Is it size? Is it the picture? Is it the edges? Et cetera, et cetera. Kids are gonna have lots of different ways that they figure out which coin is which. We wanna give students the opportunity to learn from each other and pick up on each other's tips and tricks. And so you do wanna make sure you tuck this in at some point in your lesson.